Okay, so my name is Lee. I am the owner of BlenderNPR.org, uh, along with Sage Light BWK, who's from Malaysia. Um, we put this site together because, well, we pretty much just love NPR rendering and freestyle, and we're both addicted to line rendering and other things. It's great. Um, so I guess I'll just get a little start. Uh, do you guys want to do uh, freestyle basics? I can do a quick demo if you'd like. I have a Blender window ready for it. And that's a big yes from this Oh, group. big yes. Okay. So I have created a mesh just out of the our lovely default cube just for fun. Um, and, and now it's noteworthy that you can actually do the rendered mode with freestyle turned on so that when you're uh, selecting different edge types, you can see it happen in real time. That's just one big uh, thing that I thought I'd throw out there immediately. Uh, if you don't know what freestyle is, freestyle is a post-process edge rendering uh, proce uh, process. So it detects edges based on your mesh. As you can see, you know, I just have a s simple cube here, and I have freestyle checked, and there's some things here that are for the more advanced users. <laughs> I won't get into that. You go over to the This panel, render layers panel, yeah, uh, and you can start going at freestyle in parameter edit mode. I'm hearing detected poor audio quality. Is that correct, or am I sounding okay? You can just ignore it. It's fine. Okay, it's I'm fine. I said I'm fine. Um, you can there. It, it's a little intimidating at first, uh, admittedly, because there's so many settings, uh, and it does on the surface, such simple things, but it's really not. It's actually a lot of computation and etc. cetera. Uh, I'll get right into some of the edge types, uh, just because that's what people are going to want to see. They're going to see, how do I get edges? Like, right now, I want edges. So uh, you'll, you'll, have a, you'll have a line style, uh, a freestyle line set, which is similar to, it's similar to having an extra set of render layers, but only for the purpose of having a line style applied to it. So you, you could just call this one layer of lines, which can have one line style attached to it. So you can start changing things like colors and, you know, you could, I love, I love this new interactive mode that, it, that came in um, recently. This is great. You can just see it instantly. Now this only works on simple meshes. Don't try to do it with some crazy high poly scene or you'll probably blow up your computer. Um, it, Edge types within the line set panel, um, you, you start by selecting your visibility. And this is just the basic workflow. Start by selecting your visibility type. Do you want hidden lines? Do you want a range of, of lines which occlude lines that are somewhere behind a certain amount of faces? That's what QI range can give you. You can give it a start and an end. So you could say it's between five and it's between five and ten faces, and it'll render hidden lines between those. Right now, I have hidden lines. Uh, I don't have any lines renderable that are hidden, but if I uncheck a couple, I can see uh, I can see my crease lines because they're now hidden. For example, um, you can do material boundaries. There's crazy amounts of cool things you can do with it. Um, are there any immediate questions? Uh, if if anybody's just completely baffled because I'm just throwing all this information out, is there any questions? Any questions? No, I think we're good here. We're good. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to keep powering on. So you, you could see that it does what you want it to do immediately, especially in this nice interactive mode. But um, this is like the, the tip of the iceberg. So I can show you some examples of what freestyle can do. Here's, this, is a, uh, this is a little tank track I made. So all the white lines here are freestyle lines. So, so it kind of gives it a uh, almost like a vector graphic look uh, of just uh, which, by the way, freestyle lines, uh, they're working. Actually, there's a script you can use to output vector lines. Just throwing that out there if people are interested. Um, other things it can do, more subtle effects, like the, the lines on this bamboo here. Uh, you, there's so many line styles uh, that you can obtain. This is a mech. That's uh, not a great picture. 
Um, but this is actually one of the vectors that I outputted. And it's actually a three, actually, no, it's a 3D curve object. This is in this one I rendered out. So you can actually render freestyle lines as 3D curve objects and then play with them in Blender. Uh, that would be obtainable. I couldn't say exactly right now. I'm sure somebody will correct me there. But um, this is not freestyle. This is something that uh, Sage and I worked on a long time ago. And it was using edge nodes, which was just an insane spaghetti mess of uh, no, composite nodes, actually, to extract edges, hidden and non-hidden edges, in fact. So, But the problem is here, you can't change the line style. So that, those are the bottlenecks we were facing, because we were actually experimenting with edge rendering before Freestyle was completely into Blender. And of course, we all know we had Blender 2.67 and the Freestyle splash screen, which was awesome. Uh, that was by McClellan Lee, and he's great, and he does anime and manga type stuff, and he uses freestyle for some of his stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, an extreme example of a freestyle line style. This is one line style, and it, freestyle is able to, with um, geometry modifiers, which are in the, uh, in the, line, the line style panel, you start adding modifiers uh, in the geometry. You can start out adding noise modifiers for instance, and it'll give it a wavy, wiggly look. Um, <laughs> you can get pretty extreme with some of these modifiers, as you can see in this picture. <laughs> That's actually multiple. I, I stated that wrongly earlier. That's actually multiple line sets layered on top of each other. So you can see that it's pretty powerful. And it, it actually doesn't take very long for Freestyle to render some of this stuff. Actually, it's pretty amazing. Uh, if it was a higher poly count, it certainly would, because that's a separate uh, process within the freestyle pipeline. Is that the correct term, I hope? Uh, the way it processes mesh data and et cetera. Um, so basically, low poly scene measure quick, or renders quickly. High poly scene not renders very quickly. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a pretty universal trait, I guess, in CG. Um, so with that, um, I, I hope I showed you guys enough quick stuff that you could get your feet wet with freestyle. I don't know how much time I have here. Is there a, there, is there a cutoff? Uh, so there's not. Uh, we have the room until 2, but nobody okay. looks like they're going to kick us out. So I'd say keep going and be sure you leave time for, your, for an overview of your course. Yeah. Um, so with yeah, thanks for reminding me. With that being said, um, I uh, Sage and I uh, wrote and produced a two-hour video course, which is available on the Blender NPR website directly. Uh, you can go to the BNPR store, grab that if you'd like. Um, I think Sterling got it. How how was it? Did you did you get a, get that Sterling? Yeah, I've been powering my way through them, and it's been great so far. Nice. Oh, good. Okay, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, we have some pretty good reviews. I'm I'm really excited. I was really nervous because I really I have never really done an actual video tutorial, and Sage is an excellent writer, um, really excellent writer, and a great script writer. So he was able to like make this awesome script, and then together we were kind of able to make it what I hoped to be more of a fun presentation, kind of pseudo gamey style. Um, there's some. A totally cheeseball humor in there. You just have to groan and laugh about it a little bit. Um, <laughs> we, have a, we have a question here. Like a uh, different kind of render looks like uh, watercolor. Can that be achieved through freestyle? Uh, no. Um, this watercolor look here is uh, just a painting overlay of the lines. But you, uh, if you see in the previous, I uh, was a picture I just showed of the bamboo. This was freestyle lines, but you can add alpha and textures to your lines to give them a little more of a, a brushy stroke look. Mm -hmm. um, and then actually, yeah, you can you can actually give real textures now, like material textures, to freestyle lines um, as of, I think, this current version. Mm -hmm. So you could actually have brush, really, like, textury, brushy strokes, not just, mm -hmm. like, not post-process brush strokes. But So this is obviously just has, like, a screen space texture behind it. But what you could actually get is more of a, a texture. And, and you can have like a start end 
so that it starts with, say, a broader stroke and ends with a thinner stroke. And then in between, you can fill that with a separate texture. It'd be like taking um, several planes and mapping them linearly and then put it, you know, having a start and finish and then the fillers in between that would go the distance of the stroke. So, yeah, you can you could, I suppose, do something like that. Um, yeah, uh, so I got that was sidetracked. OK, so anyway, yes, the course is approximately two hours, 124 minutes. Yeah, uh, it's split up into 15 parts so that it's not you don't have to like find your place in the video. Uh, I think that they're averaging. But I think the biggest one's like 20 some minutes, maybe, maybe 30. It's not not terribly long, but there's absolutely amazing amounts of information in there. We partnered, or we, we asked TK Tomito, the main freestyle developer, to help us a little bit. Um, that turned out to be an awesome, awesome partnership. So a big shout out to TK A as a really cool, really calm, and I will say very patient developer. Um, he really listens and is is always collected about his responses, and he gets things done and is really awesome at getting his goals achieved and um, very intelligent about making goals that make make sense if that if that sounds right. Um, so he helped us actually technically correctly write the course so that it wasn't you know off in any way. Um, so he he actually read through the whole script and was kind enough to do that for us. Um, yeah, it's it was it took months. I have a full time job, by the way. I'm a I'm a CAD detailer for a mechanical contractor. And so I do HVAC sheet metal, uh, CAD steel design and not quite engineering, but um, steel design and detailing. So I'm and that's only in the last six months. So uh, <laughs> learning AutoCAD again and going back and forth between AutoCAD and Blender is often a nightmare because of key command differences. <laughs> I don't know if anybody in here has used regular AutoCAD in a while, but yeah, it's archaic and I hate it. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's just not as free as Blender as far as the way the viewport works and it's just some rigid things. In any case, uh, yeah, so the freestyle course is available. It's I feel we feel it, it was uh, reasonably priced. We kind of based our pricing based on the um, uh, thirty-eight bucks, which is I, I mean for a two-hour DVD, I felt was a good pricing uh, pricing for it. And it was kind of based on Blender Institution level um, training DVDs that they've had in the past, and that's what we wanted. We wanted to make it as quality as something like that. So I, I hoped, I hope that we have achieved that. And it seems like we're getting good feedback. I haven't had heard anybody, uh, no pitchforks, no flaming torches, um, <laughs> no lynches or mobs. So, uh, yeah, it sounds, it sounds like people like it. It's but, awesome. I would, I would vouch for it. Uh, but you should definitely mention beer, I think. Oh before. man. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so huh, I, we, we kind of tongue in cheek named our, our pet project beer because it's blender extended expressive rendering and sage has been like spearheading this hardcore uh it's not all his idea just to make it clear it, it it's a lot of his framework but man we've been talking to I, I literally hundreds of people off and on not not all at once obviously but you know just taking input from just all the little nooks and crannies of the blender user base i feel I, I we felt that Blender NPR works and expressive renders and things kind of got pushed to the wayside. Nothing against cycles or anything else, but we kind of feel like, hey, it's still a really valid media, and we'd like to promote it again and get people like back to saying, hey, you know, not everything has to be absolutely realistic or hyper realistic or Hollywood, this or that. So it's like, you know, it's it's whimsical, it's fun. There's limitless possibilities to. Um, to style when you're talking about expressive rendering and NPR rendering. Um, uh, we've read oh, dozens of college papers on other render uh, styles and methods like Xtune, which I totally recommend you researching if you like shaders. Um, Xtune is, uh, let's see if I have a quick thing on Xtune. This is my, my Blender wish 
if I ever saw Xtune as a node. Now, Beer does not rely on nodes. In fact, we kind of, I say this lightly, we've kind of shunned the node system just because it can be more of a hassle to set up and time consuming. And if you're extremely uh, <laughs> OCD about th certain things, you might spend more time just arranging your nodes than actually using them. So uh, <laughs> I like my nodes to look pretty. So I'm one of those people, as you can kind of see here, I guess. But Xtune is essentially a two-dimensional, or excuse me, a, a two, yeah, I guess a two-dimensional color ramp system. So it would take colors from the X and Y coordinates based on values of one to zero, and I'm saying grayscale as just to keep it easy. So you could take a grayscale image of the, say, regular Lambert shader, you could apply a distance, a Z depth, depth of field type uh, modifier to this. And this is going to basically take these, these colors, however you want to shade it and, and merge them. So you, you can see it's going from a, from a hard edge cell shade to a nice soft edge cell shade. And um, that is uh, demonstrated here in this file. This is actually the Blender viewport. If you can't wow. believe that. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, this, bl uh, this blew me away when uh, Sage actually made this file, too, and masterfully created this mist effect. Um, so we can, we can like, go forward, and you can see the fog in, in this. this uh, yeah, and I think Mike Pan uh, worked a little bit in the same vein on the Blender uh, game engine, and that was, you know, using some of this viewport stuff, too, and... Yeah, I I really think this level of detail you can you can do level of detail so you could like have if you had texture painting you could have shrubbery and then it kind of fades out to kind of like a flatter just like it kind of does in real life if you will so it's like NPR PR <laughs> in a way <laughs> um, but yeah um, you you can see that it's pretty pretty responsive in the viewport and what beer would like to do is if you were to render this, you can see that this huge render process is gonna happen. I'm, and I probably won't even, yeah. It's like doing all this stuff and then rendering black because I don't know what I did wrong. Let's just act like I didn't do that. <laughs> um, yeah. So here's here's the node set up for this. This is not a, two, this is not a true, uh, this is obviously a hack of four separate color ramps, but but if you could imagine this as a, instead of a chunky, blocky flow of color ramps, this would actually be a fluid transition of colors, just like in the 2D image that, or the 2D map I was showing in this in this picture here. It's a nice gradual uh, change of color. So this has application, obviously, in depth of field and such things, and. Um, I don't want to dwell too much on it, but I, I, I'm actually, I just love Xtune. I just think the, pr the premise of a 2D color ramp rather than a one-dimensional or linear, just you get this to this. Now, now you can add this depth to it, I think, would just be really amazing for Blender to have. And that is in our beer proposal, which <laughs> we've thrown around different names. Um, naming is always, you know, fun is, or, and, and also a head-banging experience because you want a good image. I mean, beer is definitely not going to be the name of the uh, end result. Um, we've toyed around with uh, just tons of other stuff. We thought about just going with porn render. I mean, <laughs> why not, right? Just get everybody's attention. <laughs> no, uh, so that was kind of an interesting adventure. Um, but there is a very well thought out written um, outline of what beer could be. And we are actually going to present a case at Blender Conference. We have submitted a paper. We have not yet been approved. So we don't know if we're going to be able to or not. But we have a gentleman uh, that is going to present there, uh, which is awesome, because he, he lives close enough that he can do that. So um, his name's Wasili. I hope I didn't butcher that. And he's probably listening, saying, no, no, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, he's he's uh, he's into that NPR rendering stuff too, and he's kind of part part helping spearhead this the development and how we can uh, get beer developed. And one of the ways that we wanted to help beer develop to to go back to the um, the course, um, we actually 
are taking a large portion of the course money that we're getting. We're A, funding the website of BMPR, but we're also taking a large portion of it to actually fund the beer development, and we're estimating it to be around $20,000 to get it to a point where it's a valid feature to start, basically a skeleton feature to start really adding even more to. So we want to build it in a modular fashion to get more people involved in helping build it, A, so that we can distribute the load of development. But um, you know, obviously, you have to have somebody that's one guy that would be the, the, the bottleneck to kind of coordinate things. And obviously, there's been some hurdles with, you know, Anytime you want to do a substantial change to Blender, it's it's a big deal. So we don't we we're trying not to substantially change Blender unless it's going to be an awesome thing for Blender. What what we would what we kind of had toyed with the idea is saying, and I am not saying this, but we have toyed with the idea of saying it's essentially the Blender internal renderer 2.0. And that's I say that very lightly. I don't want people to think that the Blender internal renderer is going to get rehauled, but it could be done that way and I think that um, like I don't know I, I think people like the blender internal renderer and still use it uh, for a lot of things and if it got some some upgrading uh, I know that Sam earlier in his presentation was talking about octane and some of the settings and how I think he even kind of touched on the the nodes versus settings thing and um, uh, what beer would like to do is shift the it, it's kind of merge since NPR and expressive rendering is kind of a analogous to like say painting or drawing or something like that especially with freestyle involved um, we would like to help bring features from 2d software like you know Photoshop GIMP etc and kind of apply that system to blender it is more of a form of layering your your things with modifiers in those layers and then you can you can do the things that yeah, like you can do in Photoshop you could um, you could isolate layers. You could turn layers off and on, group them, etc. But it has a more of a modularity, um, and I think even cycles has some of that. If you look at it, you know, when you start adding shaders and stuff, it it, pop, it populates the um, the material uh, with some of that kind of stuff. And I think that, and then adding some of the other stuff would be a really cool workflow because you just start you just start layering your your scene. You have this mesh and and, and a bunch of objects, and you start applying your materials and layering it in real time. And the whole the whole goal of beer is totally what you see is what you get. Like instant, you know, like just like the GLSL viewport, um, you know, you want to have it to where you're looking at it when you have 12, it's going to pull everything together and, and create your raster image, you know? And uh, uh, everybody likes cycles because of that, because it's more or less, you can see what you're doing and so Beer would like to kind of bring that to the NPR side if you think about it in those terms where, hey, you're seeing this awesome thing and it already looks cool. Um, now let's just hit our render button and bam, and you're, you're, you're going. So it's cheaper on your hardware. Um, I don't know the future of GPU, GLSL <laughs> rendering. That's a huge topic I don't know much about, but, you know, just getting it to a point where it's it, you, like this, you know, um, would be a big accomplishment. So that when you when you go to render, your stuff looks like it looks when you're looking at it, color-wise and everything. And um, being able to kind of, uh, yeah, I don't know, just, it, changing the way that scenes are put together in in some ways for the more obscure types of works. Like NPR works can be pretty obscure, obviously. Not everything has to be physically accurate in your scene, so it makes sense to me personally to have a layering system like that. Because, and besides, a lot of people take backgrounds and paint over them, and if you could do that workflow, but within Blender and with objects, uh, that would be rather awesome. I, I think. Um, are there any questions about beer specifically, or um, NPR or expressive rendering in general? Any any questions in the room? Sense. Yeah, and if anybody's listening by YouTube, jump in the IRC channel and ask there. Oh yeah, I can I can pop over there too and and even look at questions. So um, yeah, I'm, 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 you may want to also say what your email is just in case for if anyone or the website if anyone wants to get in touch with you. Yeah, um, the Blender NPR 
org website is available. Um, we we kind of like to use the Facebook collaboration page here. Um, this is I don't know if is my share screen working okay? Uh, yeah, but we're not seeing your Facebook page. Oh, uh, there you go. Now we there it is. Oh, it must be a no, delay. Okay, I I realized that there was some delay here. So. What you're seeing here is is a is a group on Facebook that I created a while a long while back, and it has 1,500 members now. And we talk about stuff, freestyle, NPR shading, etc. Um, there's been some actually really awesome works to come through here. Um, it's Lee, if you can hear really this, cool we're see. getting a delay from you. Oh, okay. I'll <laughs> slow down. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I. I the name of the group is Blender NPR and Freestyle Collaboration. If you, I think I, I think I'm watching it on your projector through on your screen, so I can see that I'm accurate now. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, then uh, we basically use that as a as a hub of contact for NPR in general. Um, I, I mean, I you know what? I'll throw out my email. In the IRC, if anybody like I don't know has really random questions uh, that are, or if they, or if you guys want to get involved coding wise, or if anybody has coding experience that would be willing to help guide us too, that would be pretty awesome. Oh, contact! Yeah, there's a contact. Maybe I'll just direct you there. Um, but yeah, we are looking for. We have somebody in mind to help us code the first part after we get. Uh, an initial amount of funding, which is a quarter of the twenty thousand dollars. So once we have that, we can like actually start something substantial, hopefully. And then, um, yeah, that's all pending the um, the Blender conference. You see how that goes, and see how we can work with the main Blender developers to see if we can really get something in Blender change. I mean. We have studios and, and lots of users literally just donating money to this cause, not even purchasing the course, but donating money. And it's really inspirational to see the need for it. And um, yeah, uh, I'll throw out my email in the IRC if anybody has a, any more questions about it. Uh, so I, yeah, to, I guess if we want to support the effort, then definitely go to Blender NPR and look into the courses. Uh, yeah, well, it's only one of the courses that you have, right? Oh uh, yeah, I have. Um, if you go to the Blender NPR store, there's a the little menu button. Um, there's I don't know how. Obviously, my browser is pretty slow because of <laughs> this video thing. But if you go to the store. I believe there are, there, I, I know there are because I put it, I mean, we put in there, of course. There are several mini courses in freestyle that if you feel comfortable with freestyle already, um, there are some mini courses that are pretty rock star by Sage. Um, he did a bang up job of making some pretty cool renders. These are all uh, freestyle effects that could be used. I think I'm on, the, yeah, I see my page on there. Oh, cool. um, that is cool. The Hewlett Bay one is so awesome. Yeah, no, I mean, I and and I like the fact that he writes a story, a little kind of like a teaser blurp story at the beginning of his tutorials because, like I said, he is a good writer. And I always think that I, I we had this talk a little bit. I always think it's important that if you're learning something, you're learning why you're learning it. Um, so it's like. I'm just going to learn C++. Well, you know what? If I don't have a reason to use C++, you're going to get you're going to deflate very quickly because it's a big topic and unless you have like this huge goal, you're going to just you're not going to follow through with it or you're not as likely to follow through. So, I think it's important, you know, even just as mini tutorial writing, it's like it's fun to have a like, hey, this is a weird little story just to get my mind thinking about things and different stuff. And then it's like you got your imagination going, and you're like, yeah, you know what? This is worth making um, as a piece of art or learning this way of doing things. So it's cool. And that, I, I guess that re is reflected also in our course a little bit, that you're leveling up. You're, you're getting somewhere in this venture of learning. Um, yeah, we do have a donation page. We take Bitcoin. 
because why not? Um, <laughs> you can donate as much as you want. If you're if you want the special, you can have the Blender NPR Unlimited. No no limit of access to anything we ever do ever in a million years, and it's twenty thousand dollars. So anybody can take it right now. Any any offers? Because yeah, we totally take it. <laughs> That's great. Uh, yeah, it was it was kind of a funny little thing we decided to do. Um, <laughs> just as like, uh, hey, this is how much it costs to code a feature, and we really want it coded. So you know, if somebody, hey, if a studio really did want it, I mean, gosh, there you go. There's your way of doing it. And then you get the added benefit of uh, some crazy Blender NPR teammate te teammates uh, feeding you ideas and more tutorials and stuff. So you get the software and you get the training, <laughs> if that makes sense. Oh. Yeah, so, um, yeah, uh, I really don't have too much more else to present um, other than some <laughs> some of my old works. This is, this <laughs> I, I made years ago. This is not freestyle. This is, again, composite nodes, and I had to UV unwrap and paint him so that the Sobel filter would work properly, and it was a hassle. And then I found out about freestyle, and I kicked my computer and threw it out the window because I could have done this in like three seconds instead of spending hours UV unwrapping just to get edge rendering on this figure. <laughs> so I, I've, Freestyle's inspired me to do more works and have fun with lines and things and get into more NPR stuff. Um, with beer, I think that would do another unlocking of things you could do in Blender as far as NPR is concerned. Um, doing things like this which I did with the composite nodes. Kind of looks like an old newspaper hatching style of a factory or like an old book. Um, I'm kind of infatuated with hatching and stippling and these kinds of effects and making them look like, I mean, really making them look like they are from an old time. I think it's cool to play with that kind of stuff. And I think that um, Enable a beer would enable that to be such such a more free flowing process. Um, it would be cool to be able to do that. This is like a sucky picture, but this is um, a, a another software render that does Veroni based stippling. So it takes weighted values and stipples more or less based on your parameters. And I think it would be cool to have features like that in Blender. Um, just more more half tone, more hatching, more fun stuff for like, you know, your comic book making, your manga styles, um, even anime, uh, animation stuff would be really cool to have. So I think that um, funding Beard would is, is one of those ways that we can help get stuff like that in Blender. Um, are there, I, I think I'm petering out on information. I have a bunch <laughs> of stuff randomly all over my screen, and so I don't want to babble, but um, if there are any more questions, feel free. Uh, I think uh, that... Yeah, no, I think that's great. Um, wait, I think we're out of questions in the room here, and uh, I'm cool. not seeing any in the IRC channel. So thank you so much, Lee, for joining. Yeah, no, thanks so much for squeezing me in there. I was. It's been a crazy week, so uh, and I had to. I'm. I got plywood behind me. I'm working in my new office that I'm trying to build. So it's a uh, work in progress. Yeah, and I, not, and I'm not a problem. Thanks. For